Hi, and welcome to another video from the Intelligent Auto Channel. Today, we have another EV. We have this 2016 Mercedes E350E Hybrid. The car was recovered into a Mercedes dealership, where the Mercedes dealership diagnosed it requiring a high voltage battery. Just while I've got your attention, I had a customer in this week, uh, which uh, made me laugh. Um, he was asked, as we ask all our customers, how did you find out about us? Where did you get our number? Uh, and he said he was pointed to the YouTube channel. The guy that pointed him towards the YouTube ch channel says, watch this channel, Intelligent Auto. He's like the Dumbledore of diagnostics. Dumbledore. I don't know if that's because uh, I'm a wizard or is it just because I'm a bit hairy. I don't really know whether to take it as a compliment or as an uh, insult, but I'll take the compliment. So uh, if you're watching, thanks for the compliment. Here we are inside the car. Um, you'll recognise these warnings from the, the GLE we had in last week. Um, battery malfunction fault and also towing not permitted. So you want his manual, you press the brake pedal and try and start the vehicle. Ignition comes on, but we have no ready light. So basically the vehicle won't start. I can select a gear and get it in neutral, won't go into drive. So, customer complaint confirmed. Close the door again. Shift out of park and neutral, depress brake and start engine. I'm trying to start it. Got the hybrid light on up here, but no ready light to see the hybrid's ready. So it goes to neutral, won't go to drive or reverse, but we'll go back to park. I've got the invoice here from Mercedes, um, initial diagnostic, we've charged them 459 quid, it says ignition diagnosis 99 quid, carried out star test, fault in the HV battery, insulation fault present, carry out safe, basically they've charged them 300 quid to basically carry out safe for transportation tests and perform manual disconnect of battery test voltage all voltages below 60 volts dc result battery not safe to transport 12 volt battery also inoperative may require new the car company also had a flat 12 volt battery it wouldn't take a charge we've replaced the 12 volt battery by the way um what makes me laugh and i'll put a I'll put a screenshot in is when the vehicle came to us that that uh, supposedly made it safe for transport and the disconnect of a high voltage battery. Um, they put some insulation covers on the terminals. The only terminal I hadn't covered was the one that could actually bloody bite you. So I'll, I'll put that up now. You can have a laugh. I've uh, scanned the vehicle and then basically done a big fault clear because there was faults all over this car because of the flat 12 volt battery. So what I've done is, I've cycled the ignition a couple of times, done a fault clear, and the only faults that we're left with are in the BMS, which is the battery management system. So if we enter that, Read the fault codes. The ohm meter for the isolation resistance in the hybrid high voltage battery module has an electrical fault, which is a current fault. We've got the cell voltages of the high voltage battery module are too low. 
We've got a sensor module A of the high voltage battery module has an electrical fault. Sensor module B of the high voltage battery module has an electrical fault. Sensor C of the high voltage battery module has an electrical fault. And sensor D of the high voltage battery module has an electrical fault. So I'm, without looking at the service info, I'm going to assume that there's four separate battery modules within the battery. Um, so there's four battery packs which are monitored by their own modules, which are then connected to the main battery management system. Um, this one here, the ohm meter for the isolation resistance for the high voltage battery, that's interesting because is it actually an insulation fault or is it an issue with the device that's built into the battery that measures the isolation of the battery? Cell voltage of the hybrid battery module are too low, so is the, is the high voltage battery actually discharged? So we'll, um, I think what we'll do is we'll make the vehicle safe. I've basically plugged everything back in to, re, to, to start the diagnosis again. So we'll now go and make everything safe. We'll disconnect the, um, the service plug for the high voltage battery, disconnect the battery and uh, check the voltages on the outputs of the battery. The service plug is actually, um, it's not disconnecting the high voltage, it's disconnecting the interlock circuit. So again, what we do is we push that in and we slide this out, which sometimes can be easier said than done with these. That's it, slid out. There's a little hole there you can put a padlock in. Um, I'm here by myself, I, there's nobody else going to be pushing that plug in while I'm here, so I'm just going to leave it. Uh, that lives, it's clipped onto this panel here next to the, to, the, to the cooling reservoir. So that's now in battery service mode, so we can now go ahead and disconnect that high voltage battery. High voltage battery lives in the boot, trunk, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that there is the battery module itself. This here, underneath here, is the charging module for charging the battery. Uh, and as you can see, we've got two cables coming out this battery. We've got one connector with two, two wires on, which that is going through the boot floor under the car. So I would imagine that's going to the inverter for the drive motor. And then we have a smaller connector here. This one here. This one goes to this charging module. It comes into the charging module here and then comes out the charging module, goes through the, the back of the boot floor and it's gonna to go to the charging port here. Mercedes have put this nice sticker on to say that it's, uh, it's not safe. So we'll uh, take that off. Is that gonna open? <coughs> I'm going to open the charging ports behind there for charging the, the hybrid battery. So once again, we're going to disconnect the battery and we'll take some voltage readings. Screw the lock on this, uh, on this plug, which is a T20, I believe. There we go. And again, I haven't got my high voltage gloves on because I'm on the outside of the insulation. That's a bit awkward unscrewing this with a big pair of gloves on. See, that's unplugged. So now, I've already checked the gloves for leaks, they're not leaking. Put the class zero gloves on, which are good for a thousand volts. And we'll unplug this one first, which is the charging lead. And then we'll unplug this one, which is the power to the inverter. We'll get the meter on. off again because it's beeped I've pressed something so there we go and we're going to take some voltage readings across this terminal here 
the battery. One point two volts. I'm going to let that rest a bit and check that again. So I've literally just isolated it. Take another reading. Oh, we're going to these terminals. And 13, 14 millivolts. So we're safe. So gloves off. Right, because it's reporting an insulation fault, or it, I was told it was reporting an insulation fault, I'm going to do some insulation tests on these two cables to make sure there's no insulation fault car side as we had on the other Merc. Once again, using the Think Car insulation tester, uh, EVC 201. Um, I didn't do this on the last video because I'd already I'd done it off camera, but there is a self test built into this to check the meter's okay, which is on the bottom here, and it's a 200 mega ohm resistor. So what we do is we clip on to, bo to both sides of this and get this clip to stay on, there we go. Press test. Come on, there we go. We've got nigh on 200 mega ohms, so just make sure that the meter is correct and calibrated. Stick the little cover back on that to protect the terminals. That's that tested. By the way, I did test my multimeter on the car's 12 volt battery before I unplugged and tested this battery. So once again, we're going to test to the ground of the vehicle. So there's a little ground point there. And I'm going to go onto here. Three point six, four point nine, five point seven mega ohms, six mega ohms. Basically, that's okay. And we'll test again on the other side of that plug. Four point three, six point two, six point six. And again, that's okay. So happy that there's no shorts on from on that circuit. And the charger, we'll just check that. Went to 5.6 giga ohms and then they went to affinity. Just test that again. Again, we're on a 500 volt range there. So again, open circuit, infinity. So happy that the fault is not vehicle side and it's definitely inside of this battery. Switch this off. Put that back up there. So it's looking like the problem is in the battery. Problem is, I can't take an insulation test from either of these terminals. Reason being is inside the battery itself, we have, there'll be a set of relays in there, which are basically, as soon as the battery is switched off or the interlock is broke by us unplugging the battery or taking the service plug out those relays will go to the open positions hence why there's no voltage at these terminals so even if i took a, a test from here to the case of the battery i'm just testing basically that terminal to the case of the battery which we know you know i don't think we have a problem there but so we'd need to get into the inside of the battery. We need to get to the live. Um, 
we need to get the other side of the relay pack inside the battery to then take insulation tests from the buzz bars inside the battery to the case of the battery to check has the battery physically got an insulation fault. So I've noticed there's this panel here. It's got a little yellow sticker on it. It says warning high voltage. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that panel because I'm thinking that behind that panel may give me the access that I require. So we're back on with the, the gloves and we'll remove these screws and we'll have a look in there. Get them screws out the way so that they can't fall in the battery and we remove this cover. Is the cover going to come off? It's the fuses that are in there. We have the fuses, which I believe, I'll check to make sure there's any power on them, will be again after the relay. So let's see. Basically, if you wanted to make this battery totally safe, what you'll be doing is removing those fuses. That's what they are. So we can't, there's no, there's no power there at the fuses. There's a little bit of residual voltage sitting there, but nothing great. So to get into this battery, I think we're gonna to have to remove it, lift it out. So to get it out, it looks like it's got some bolts around it. And you take these water pipes off. There's a little vent exhaust tube here. And then there's the the connection for the from the vehicle to the battery, which is that there. That remove water pipes to remove and this vent to remove and then unbolt the battery which looks like there's a bolt in the back of each corner there's a bolt at the front here and then lift the battery out looks like possibly going to have to take the trim out so we get to go inside of a high voltage battery um, so we'll get the battery lifted out. It's going to have to wait till tomorrow because I'm here by myself. I ain't lifting that out today by myself. Um, we'll get it on a bench <coughs> and then we'll uh, open it up. See what we find inside. So I think this is going to go to a part two. Um, we've made the, the vehicle safe. We've disconnected the high voltage battery we're going to need to lift this battery out. So uh, stay tuned and we'll uh, see where we go from here.